Yeah, you brought up two good points. One thing that I hear, I actually see this a lot, you know, in my day job. This actually came up uh, like two weeks ago. Uh, we added, one of the developers added a new enum to the application. And I was like, listen, you know, this, e this doesn't, this shouldn't be an enum. And he was just like, but why? I don't understand. It's like, it's a, it's a subset of options. And it, and you know, it seems like it makes sense to me. And I was like, yeah, but it, it, it's not an exhausted list. Like you have not exhausted all the possible options. And you said days of the week. That's a great example. There are a, a finite number of options for days of the week. So that can be an enum because it will never change. Um, and I think, and even personally myself, you know, I hate to say I abused enums, but it's like, you know, it, it's kind of like you, it's there. It seems like it makes sense for like weapon types or something like that. But yeah, when you, when you're going to use an enum, when you're considering using an enum, you should ask the question, have I exhausted every possible option that could be in this, uh, enum? Um, another thing that you brought up was the tooling. Yeah. And that's something that a lot of game developers, you know, it's, it's something that I would like to get across more on my channel and, and make more videos about and talk about, um, is the aspect of game development that is, you know, tooling, supporting your project, uh, with proprietary tools. And, uh, you know, whatever, I can go on a rant on that. But. Well, that's to be honest, one of my favorite parts of software in general. I mean, it is really fun having stuff move around on screen, but there's <laughs> something really cool about making custom inspectors and having code generators and like, it's a really silly thing, but I, whenever I have an interface for an object, so a common thing I do is I have a concept called an actor. And an actor is just when I encapsulate a single object in my scene and I say, this object can turn on or off, show or hide, and probably has some basic action. So a good example of this would be a light or a some prop in the scene that has sort of a, a finite set of things it does, but it's sort of just an actor in the scene and it's meant to sort of add ambience or whatever. I build an inspector for that that gives me the buttons in the inspector for on, off, show, and hide. And then what I also do is I build an actor manager, which will group them all and then let me toggle them off based on rooms or based on categories they're in. I don't need to do this, but it means that the designers in the team can copy the actor script, put it onto any other object, hook up animations to the shows and hides. It automatically gets added to the manager class and I can control it from one place or they can control it from one place. And so it gives you this really nice set of, um, I don't know, just automated tooling that makes everything easier to work with and you don't think about it again. So tool development is one of my favorite. The other thing, reading files, like the amount of times I think about level design when it's procedural and at the end of the day, you're just looping and then adding things at, at, you know, based on some algorithm, you can load that stuff in from files. So it's so easy to just take a 2D array in a text file, zero comma, zero comma, zero comma, one, zero comma, one, one, zero, you know, and just basically build a structure for what your, your layout is, load it in. It's completely, um, it has no data associated with it other than positional data. And you can take that map layout and then feed in a, a block category or a, entity type list and just say for each zero, this thing, for each one, this thing, for each two, this thing. And you can basically load all of that in with automated tooling. And then you can even build an external editor, which can generate those by, you know, type in a number of width by height and then draw a grid. And then you can have it like read a text of, of sprites and then give the editor something fun to play with outside of Unity that would build these text files. There's so many amazing things you can do that like it's, it's really can't be, it can't be said enough. A lot of people think game development is literally writing the code that appears on screen or the stuff that makes things move. But there's an entire industry of people whose sole job it is, is to make the production faster, to add more assets to the game world, to extend the the, the various different components of the world. Another one is localization. Like that's so hard to do, to have oh, a tool yeah. that will automate all of the different languages and replace the text where it needs to be. Like if you can do this, you can save yourself what would be somebody's job for about a month, just trying to get all of the right text in all of the right places. So it, it isn't something to, to to scoff at, you know? It's actually very fun to do. Yeah, and if you consider games like massive games like, uh, you know, Red Dead Redemption is the one I always use. Um, imagine if they had to touch the code every time they wanted to add a new quest. Like the, if you think about it like that and you sort of reverse engineer it in that way, I mean, the tooling that's in that's in that game must be out of this world. And, and obviously, they probably reuse the same engine that they that they use to create Grand Theft Auto and all those other open world games. Um, but I'm, that's basically what someone's, you know, probably a whole department's job is at Rockstar is to create tools so that, you know, it does become a little more turnkey. Now, when they want to make the next, you know, open world game, they want to set it in a completely different um 
uh, story or, or timeline or whatever, they can do it because it's just sort of a matter of you have these people who are now experts inside of Rockstar using those tools, the power users of those internal tools, and they can probably crank out a game much faster than the first go around when they were creating, you know, Grand Theft Auto V or, or you know, the uh, other open world games.